this is actually a one million dollar topic, and um, the, the, I'm not, I wasn't joking, by the way. Um, analytics. How many people actually knows what analytics means in context of application development analytics? That's gonna change after this presentation. <laughs> I assure you. So, do you still remember what uh, what is the mock and stuff? <laughs> this is related. It's we related. It on purpose. And the reason we shuffled our topics is because they depend on each other. But analytics and testing analytics is actually can be done manually, just like you can do manual testing. But uh, we're going to talk about why it's so important, and it, we have to actually reveal the truth about analytics. Let's go to the next slide because next slide has a good, very good quote. Boris? Here we go. And this is the quote that you guys probably going to cost more than a million dollars for the company if we don't do analytics testing. Management do not fully trust the data and analytics on which they are basing their decisions. What I try to say in this quote is that there is not a single CEO of the company trust the data from the data team. The data analytics team comes to them and say, hey, our sales grew 50% this month based on analytics data, right? They came from real users. There is a huge chance it's the wrong data. And there is a one simple reason behind this. Boris, move to the left, thank you. <laughs> is because analytics testing is actually overlooked. I, know, I work for three large companies and I did a lot of consulting. And I assure you that only Tinder started doing analytics testing is because I pushed for this. When you test functionality of application, you don't see what analytics event get fired, right? Because you don't care. Functionality works per spec, per test plan, test cases, whatever, right? You're doing your job, pass, green light, good to go. However, analytics is something that happens under hood and you don't see that. And that's why a lot of people thinking if Boris as a developer implement analytics for the authentication of Tinder, it's supposed to work magically. Reality is very sad. Good. Manual testing for uh, analytics is very time consuming. You will have to, you must use Charles or Fiddler or any proxy server to see all analytics events. However, even if you see them, they are not human readable. It's a bunch of like hash data that have no sense. Some variables that doesn't make any readable sense to human being like A1, B7. What the hell that means, right? How are you supposed to understand what is actually sending to the analytics server? But the most important thing is the last boot point right here is the data duplication. And we've seen that a lot. A lot of times, analytics event fired more than once. You press on the button purchase on eBay, but it says like double purchase. Should we talk about what is analytics? Yeah. Who can how about like, what is analytics? analytics? What is analytics? What do you analytics. think? If you never even test, can you guess what's analytics? And why do we need it? Two questions. Try it. Raise your hand. Anyone. Analytics is like to know the page clicks, where how many number of people are using this page, how many people are using that particular functionality, how many people went from this page to this page. Some people add items to the cart, but they won't go to the purchase page. So all those metrics calculates in the analytics. So yes. Like, it's a uh, Google Analytics, right? Yeah. A lot of people use it to yeah. derive yeah. metrics and you know, go from there. Based their testing out of it, like what kind of browsers people are yeah. using these days, Absolutely. what platforms they're using. So I think it's any information we can gather from client, right? It's yeah. any information. Yeah. And any information, what's most important about user behavior. Exactly. Because if we company, a company, like let's say an example, Tinder, we know what the user's behaviors we can predict a new feature. We can determine is it successful or not. How many people know what's A-B testing? Good, because A-B testing nowadays is the way to go. Not only now, it's been there for like five years at least. 
as far as I remember, 2015 was a breakthrough in the A-B testing. There's a lot of companies that make business like Limplum on A-B testing, right? But A-B testing basically gives you ability to experiment with different features, right, at the same time. You are deploying application, again, an example of Tinder in Australia, and see how things work there before you deploy the United States. So you need to collect the data. So somehow in the same code base, in the same application, you have separate experiences. But how would you know which experience is better, A or B, right? Analytics. So why is it important? Because nowadays business decisions cannot be made without analytics. People just, they don't do it. They don't see them, let's launch this button and let's launch this like red picture here. That's not happening anymore, right? Every decision in like big company that is based on the analytics, on the data that we gather from the people. We know exactly what you want and the, like what scenario will work better for you. That's why it's so important. And that's why it can cost company millions of dollars. A wrong decision of the wrong data can cost companies a fortune, but sometimes the entire business. But guess what? When we ask question how many people test analytics, very few hands were raised, and this is a true reality of today's world in testing that a lot of people don't do it and we have to fix it and today we're going to show you how to actually automate the process there are two types of testing just want to basically lay the um, um, the basic understanding that in testing analytics there are two things you have to test the server side and client side what we're going to show you today is client side basically is is the client sending the right data to the server. That's the number one. There's another uh, kind of end of testing that particular end-to-end -end scenario is if the server received the right data. So what we're gonna show you today is only the client side because we're talking in the context of the IES application. And a similar concept is gonna work for Android and web, by the way. Very similar across. Boris? Yes. So on the technical level, what is an analytics? You know, like what, how do we gather the analytics? How do we send analytics? What is this <coughs> on the technical level? Anybody can raise your hand, please. You know, from logs. <laughs> from logs, okay. We can gather from logs. Reports? Yes. Yeah. So mostly it's just another HTTP request that happens from client. It can happen to a different server, if it is right. It doesn't need to be the same backend. But uh, sometimes we batch those requests to like tens or even like 20 requests. We gather them and then we send all together. We can do that. But basically it's just another HTTP request. Whenever user taps on something, whenever user swipes on something, whenever user spends, I don't know, 15 seconds on the screen, we would like to gather this information. We'll just fire another HTTP request to server with some information inside this request. Information about how long did you spend on the screen? Which button did you choose to tap? Uh, what direction did you swipe? And so on and so forth. So Anything imagine, we can get from A lot of people think that every time you do any gesture in an application, it's one-to-one -one ratio. One gesture, one event. In reality, it's completely opposite. One gesture, two events. It's amazing how you see, like in Tinder, for instance, you can, if you don't want any application, install Charles and look at this, you'll be amazed how many things go to analytics server. It's crazy. It's flooded with HTTP requests. Sometimes, as Boris said, because they want the performance of application, they don't do them in the real time, right? Synchronously or synchronously, they do it in batches. They collect them in the client and fire them at once. They want, otherwise it's gonna to be too much traffic and application might, might not work uh, as a good performer. All right, Boris is gonna show you a demo of and we'll read how to actually do it manually and how it's automated. So, uh, we know already what Charles is doing for us, right? So, we'll try to intercept the analytics requests as well. So, uh, as a tester, first of all, I, I wait. I, you know, in the ideal world, I have the Google spreadsheet or Confluence page with all the events being described there, but in the real world, Unfortunately, we never get that, right? <laughs> we always uh, have just the understanding that there is some set of analytics event right there in the app, and it's on our own like to determine where are they and what triggers to fire them, right? So uh, 
I open Charles, I open the app, and I just manually try to understand what's going on here with analytics. For example, you see one tab, two fires. Uh, first of all, uh, search analytics, we can see that login later tapped action, right? And this schema is obviously very custom, it's very specific to this particular app, but the idea is completely the same for anyone. Uh, we have two fields here, action and info. Right now, info is empty and action is login later tap. When does it happen? How do you think? Whenever we tap login later button, of course. And the second one is uh, places list shown, right? Whenever we see the user actually is looking on the restaurants, we fire this action place that is shown, and also we fire info with number of places, right? Whenever we we'll try to choose some particular restaurant, let's say Republic, will fire two events, uh, two requests. First of all is menu, and menu will actually give us the menu. But right now we're interested in the analytics, and analytics is place stopped. And the info is, in our case, it's ID of the restaurant that we tap. But this really doesn't matter. The idea is we can intercept those, write it down, go to analytics team or analytics manager and verify that's the correct schema, right? That's the uh, like desired analytics behavior. That's what we want to see here. After that, we'll try to apply our mock thing here. How are we going to do that? Any ideas? Any How ideas? are we going to automate it using mocks? Mock server. Very similar. Please. Um, you just like, the same way you did earlier, like you would go in Charles and grab that response, that, or the request and the response that you're getting, and then you just put that into like a mock. Okay, so um, we are not going to use Charles in automated, right? Because Charles is for manual testing. In code, we don't have Charles. We just can intercept any request and do whatever we want. So how are we going to use this? Use the same ambassador. Okay, and what are we going to do with that? and pass on the different actions and see those actions are really captured in the server side. The right actions have been captured, right places have been captured, whatever the actions that you are. Exactly, right exactly. We know the exact scenario our test will run. Let's say our test will uh, skip the login. We know how to do this with mocks. Show this, so we immediately will look for places list shown. And then our test will tap on some restaurant, whatever. And we will, looking, we will be looking for another analytics request, which is place tapped and the particular ID that is corresponding to the ID of the restaurants being tapped. So we know that if our automated test will go and do this sequence of steps, show restaurants, choose one, and we know that our client, our app, during this particular time, must send those two events. So we can set up this uh, mock HTTP server, right? And we can listen for those events, and whenever we'll receive some analytics event, we'll write it down. We'll store it inside our test framework. Or you can store it to file, or you can store it in memory, it doesn't matter. So whenever we'll, li we'll listen for those requests, and whenever this request will come, we'll store this request. After that, we know the correct schema, right? We know that during those uh, sequence of steps, we are looking for those two events. So we'll just compare the desired schema to whatever actually was recorded by Ambassador. Does it make sense? Yeah, actual result is the expected result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar, like you do with manual testing. Mm -hmm. Any questions at this level? Basically, what we try to uh, make sure that you understand the manual testing of this. And the funny thing that, you know what we do when, when mm -hmm. we actually hire manual testers, this is our interview question. We give them Tinder from the App Store, yeah, make them install Charles ahead of time, give them test case as to test analytics fine box. If a person can do this, that means they can do the job. If not, sorry. So I think that, that's why I said nowadays, Charles is like probably the most important tool to use in uh, especially mobile testing. With web, you have the web tools, right? And, and uh, you go like to the dev tools in a Chrome browser, you can do the same thing. But on a native apps, you don't get it. So Charles is the only way to do it for Android and iOS. This is a very simple example on what we just were talking about. So we know the desired schema, correct schema. And uh, obviously we use 
normal Swift structs, classes, and amps to map anything you get from JSONs to the actual Swift objects. So you can create those events. First one will be whatever place it is shown, some particular number of places. Second one will be place stopped. And I just show you here that basically in setup, you can configure your JSON responses with this session. And uh, then you can use it to ver verify the same thing. And then we have this current schema, which is basically those two events. Then we do the sequence of steps. We open, we show the restaurants, and we open Republic restaurant. And then we validate that the scheme is the same as our desired scheme. And this function validate is pretty complicated thing. It takes a couple of days to write the whole infrastructure underneath. But here we discuss the idea of it. And the idea is like this. So let's just run it. You need to set up ambassador. You need to set up the recording thing, right? You need to deduplicate the events, and so on and so forth. And right here, you will see two. You will choose Republic. It will record, and it will verify that the schema, actual schema, equals the I'll try to add to what Boris said that a lot of people do a very common mistake. They write separate tests for analytics. And this is kind of a repetition. Why? The right functional test, just add analytics. You don't have to assert all analytics events, it's impossible. There's hundreds of them can be fired during this uh, test, right? You go through five steps and there's 100 events fired. What do you go to business owner, product owner, product manager, who knows about what analytics is important, and say, hey, can you give me a list of a few of the most important things that are so crucial for the business? And they will probably give you like five things and you check them during your test scenario. Everything so that is related to money. Yeah, actually. everything that is related to money. Purchases, you name it, right? Everything that is actually makes the business mm. run. And then you embed this logic of intercepting and validating analytics during a regular functional test. So instead of writing separate tests for analytics, you embed that validation into existing scenarios. So basically it's a silver bullet, right? You hit like two targets with one bullet. And I think this is like, the most important aspect, because manually, as you can imagine, it's a nightmare to test every regression. Our manual testers, testers only check 10 analytics events during regression, 10. That's how much they can absorb. This is demo app. Here yeah. we have four. Yeah. In the real, in, if you open Facebook and try to sniff the network for Facebook, probably on every your action, you'll get, I don't know, hundreds of analytics events. Your hair color, your age, you name it, it's going to be yeah. like the whole thing. The, the, the trajectory of your finger whenever you are tapping, everything. Everything, yeah, it's crazy how much information they send to analytics. And data scientists dealing with this gazillion, you know, request and, um, sorry, the server uh, backend uh, uh, database storage that they have to somehow like use the mathematical formulas to make sense out of this data. Because there's so many things going there. Yeah, it's, and that's why the data science is so uh, in fashion right now because there's so much data, they don't, know, they don't know what to do with this. They simply don't know what to do with all the data. Any questions? What kind of bugs are you getting with? Uh, Dupes. Number one bug is duplicates. Number one. Let's say whenever you uh, are logged into whatever app, uh, we should fire that you were successfully logged in. And sometimes we fire double, we're, we're doing double firing, so we basically fire two events instead of one. It like seems like not a big problem, right? But then, <laughs> whenever big data is trying to analyze this, we see to what, like two times more successful against than there were actually successful against in the real world. And this can lead to like very bad results. Bad decisions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two most common box analytics, either event don't get fired at all, <laughs> And or dupes. Everything else is because usually schemas are pretty stable, and there is very uh, very small chance that some sort of uh, data can slip. Uh, but majority of the bugs are used. 